Welcome back to the channel everyone. So today we're going to talk about the ZX4R which is Kawasaki is basically bringing back the 6, not the 600, the 400cc inline 4 category of motorcycle. So we haven't seen a bike like this for 30 years, which is absolutely crazy. And Kawasaki are basically doing that thing they do where they're just doing something totally wacky and crazy and we're lucky enough to exist in a time when when they're basically doing that. So the last time they did it was in 2015 when they brought the Ninja H2 and H2R to market, a 220 or two or 300 in, in the in the R, 300 brake horsepower supercharged litre bike. And those bikes are actually still being sold today, eight years later. And no other manufacturer followed Kawasaki down this path. They just went ahead and did something wacky and we were lucky enough to be around and able potentially to purchase those bikes if you've got a spare 30 or 50 grand <laughs> lying around for the H2R. But they're at it again and this time it's a little bit more affordable. So they bring back the 400cc basically inline 4 Screamer sports bike. They already kind of set the ball rolling with the ZX25R which is a 250cc class four cylinder which was released in Asian markets. It didn't come to the UK, US or Europe um, but everybody loved it over there you know like I think that has about 50 horsepower something like that amazing little bike 16,000 rpm little cylinders you know flying up and down uh, like this all the way up to the red line but for the new ZX4R we're getting it. So it's coming here to the UK in October, it's already being released in the US and we'll also be able to get it in Europe as well. So what is the bike then? Basically it's the ZX25R, so it's a steel uh, trellis uh, frame. It's got a four cylinder motor which is freshly designed um, for this bike and it's equipped with super high spec suspension. So some of the variants of this bike, they've just taken the shock from the ZX10R uh, retuned it for the weight of this bike and then basically put it in this sort of pocket rocket, the ZX4R. Um, they've also got all the latest electronics package so you're talking about up down quick shifter with an auto blipper so as you drop down through the gears it'll blip the revs for you. It's going to have traction control, riding modes, the TFT display, um, LEDs everywhere. It's going to be a really really nice package and I'm really impressed with the build quality of Kawasaki's. I, I owned a Ninja 650 um, before I defected to Triumph and I absolutely love the way it was made. Everything was just very neat and all of the little fasteners were just really high quality. So I'm actually looking forward to seeing how that comes together in the new bike. 80 horsepower or 77 as standard without the Ram Air but it, Kawasaki have a system where it's some basically some ducting that rams air at speed into the engine and increases the horsepower. So if you fit the ram air, which I would probably do, you get the full 80 horsepower and it's going to be 26.5 foot-pounds of torque. So it's light on torque, but then it's going to be very high on power. So you're going to have to keep this thing on the boil, really ring it out through the gears. Obviously you can bang it up and down through the gears with the quick shifter. It's going to ask you to rev the hell out of it. And you're going to be able to do all that without going city speeds. Let's talk about weight. The bike weighs 188 kg which is a little bit heavier than we would have liked. So the Ninja 400 is 160 kg. The Ninja 600, or oh, 6R, technically 636cc, uh, that's 196 kg. The fuel tank 15 litres and the, the 600 is 17 litres, so it's again a little bit uh, less fuel, a little bit lighter, but you'd hopefully expect a little bit better fuel economy on the on the, the, the ZX4 compared to the ZX6. Um, what are the bike's main competitors then? So we're probably talking about the Yamaha R7, which is similar pricing, so just the, let's say it's sub £10,000 um, category. If you go over 10,000, you're looking at the Aprilia RS660, uh, which is very well specified bike, um, loads of tech, but it's more expensive. Looks great, a little bit more expensive. Uh, and then the other bike probably is the Honda CBR650R, kind of a lot more softer, almost an entry level sports tourer. Uh, kind of upright seating position. Again, it's four cylinders though, which it does have in common with the ZX4R. But if you compare, say, the R7 
perhaps it's most natural comparison. That bike is totally different really. It's got less power, um, so it's got 72 horsepower because remember they borrowed the engine from the MT-07. But it's a twin, so it's going to sound and feel totally different to an inline four. The good thing about the R7 is you'll have more torque, um, so you'll be able to uh, ride the bike and it'll be more forgiving. So if you come up to a roundabout in the wrong gear or you want to pull away in traffic, you're not going to need to keep it on the boil all the time. With the Aprilia, it's got 100 horsepower, I think it's about 11,000, 11,200. Uh, don't quote me on that. So you've got way more uh, power and obviously way more torque as well. Um, so that bike's a different proposition, but it's more expensive, but it's still a twin. So you really got this kind of old versus new. What you're getting with the Kawasaki is a screaming inline four, and you're getting all of the toys of the latest uh, latest and greatest Kawasaki has to offer, really nice TFT rider modes um, the, the, with the power mode so you can uh, dial it down or increase it, full uh, traction control, the quick shifter, auto blipper, all that cool stuff. Uh, really, really good suspension package as well. Now, um, let's talk about the price. I alluded to that a little bit before. It's £9,000. That's what they're dealers are kind of roughly saying. I don't think it'll be very much different from that. And it's going to come in a standard form, which is ZX4R, then the ZX4SE special equipment, usually that stands for, and the ZX4RR. Now, I would probably go for the latter two, the RR or the SE variant, because they come with the quick shifter and the blipper. They also come with the fully adjustable suspension and the RR actually comes with the sh rear shock from the ZX-10. So that's something that differentiates it. Will the SE come with cruise control, heated grips and things like that? If it does, then it might be more worthwhile to have the SE version. Because do you really need the ZX-10R shock? You could just have a fully adjustable rear shock and have some nicer electronic um, aids. Let's talk about comfort as well because the seat height is actually relatively low um, for a super sport. It's 800 millimeters. If you compare that, to, compare that to the ZX6R, which is 830, the ZX6R is one of the most cramped of the 600s. Um, if you think about it, it's probably Honda is the most roomy, and then you've got Yamaha, Suzuki, kind of in the middle, um, and then. I'd say the worst for comfort is, is probably Kawasaki. They're the most extreme. That's certainly the case with the 10 from about 2011 onwards uh, and the 636 is, is pretty darn uncomfortable as well. A lot of weight on the wrists. The problem actually for the ZX4R is in some markets it's bigger brother the, the ZX6R. So the ZX6R is a little bit heavier but not much. 196 kg and you've got the ZX4 uh, 188 so it's a little bit like eight uh, kilos difference which is kind of nothing really isn't it a rider could actually uh, swing that either way uh, the weight of the rider and then obviously the 636 blows the ZX4 out of the water in terms of its horsepower 128 uh, versus 80 uh, so it's almost 50 more horsepower and in torque it's almost double the torque I think it's 50 52 um, foot pounds versus uh, 26.5 so uh, the ZX6 uh, will destroy the ZX4 in a straight line. Uh, the only thing to mention is there are things on the 4 which aren't on the 6 which would include the TFT which I actually quite like I know we're getting a bit spoiled as motorcyclists but the TFT it was going to be a nice thing to have. Also the auto blipper. Even on the newest version of the 636, you don't get an auto blipper. You do get a bi-directional quick shifter, but you don't get uh, an auto blipper. And bear in mind that the 636 was last released in 2019. It cost £10,000 on launch. But these days, uh, it's discontinued. So it was discontinued in 2021. You won't be able to go into a Kawasaki showroom and actually buy the 636, at least not here in Europe, because it didn't meet Euro 5, so they discontinued it. So the 4R is going to occupy a really nice niche, I think. It's going to be a great little bike, it's going to be a screamer. You're going to be able to enjoy riding it um, without losing your license or risking serious injury or death. It's very difficult to ride a litre bike, and probably not even a 600 to its full capacity on the public road. It's just not really possible. And these days, 
there's more traffic, there's more bad roads, there's more um, basically police on the roads with speed cameras. So you can't really go and thrash a sports bike anymore. And that's why I think that having a little small capacity bike, you're gonna be able to get that uh, feeling of keeping it on the boil, opening the throttle wide open, banging up and down through the gears using the quick shifter. It's gonna scream, it's gonna be like going go-karting. So you go go-karting, no one ever complains that the go-kart's not quick enough, it, it, really, do they? You just have great fun and you bar around the track for a couple of hours and you just really, really enjoy it. I think it's going to be just like that. You're not going to come away thinking, damn, I wish I had more power. And talking of that, is it going to be a beginner's bike? Uh, perhaps not in the fact that it's going to be relatively expensive. There's going to be a lot easier options to ride. But then again, from a safety perspective, when you open the throttle, um, it's not going to pick up and you know that experience where you're riding along and suddenly you slip with the throttle open and it jerks you forward because there's so much torque. There isn't going to be that much torque, so it's, it's just not going to do anything if you accidentally um, yank the throttle open. You're going to have to really learn to ride the bike, get it on the boil to get the best out of it. Whether people will buy the bike, because um, it is quite a niche machine, I don't know. I tend to think not. Um, I'm interested in it and I applaud Kawasaki for doing this but I think that it will be a kind of a niche bike. I don't think it will sell loads. At the moment the trend is mainly for modern retros. Even sports bikes generally are kind of down on their luck. Um, nobody wants the discomfort anymore. Um, nobody really can ride fast on the roads anymore so it's kind of tracks uh, or modern classics or nakeds, hyper nakeds for the road. Um, I think sports bikes are a little bit sort of shunned at the moment, but could Kawasaki be starting a new revolution and bringing in small capacity sports bikes? I would actually really like this bike. I think it's lightweight, which I like. It's going to be really flickable. Don't forget, it's got these tiny little pistons going up and down, so there's not going to be much inertia in the engine. So you're going to be able to come into a corner and tip in quite nicely. I think it's going to be a fantastic handling thing. It's got 160 um, rear tyre as opposed to the standard 180 so you're going to save probably about 30, 40, 50 quid on tyres. The annual tax is going to be £47 instead of £101 um, for above 600cc bikes here in the UK. Insurance is probably going to be lower because they're going to categorise it as a small capacity bike. Uh, fuel probably be a little bit better on fuel when you're not caning it but you're going to be caning it most of the time, so probably discount that one. And it's probably going to be comfortable-ish for a sports bike because you've got that 800mm seat height. If you think the 636 is on 830, so I think it's going to be a little bit more roomy um, than the 600s. So hopefully it'll be comfortable and fairly economical. And don't forget, yes, it's £9,000, so it's quite expensive to buy as a bike, as a sports bike, uh, for the power output. But then it does have that power, the complexity of a four-cylinder um, inline engine, and also all of the latest toys of Kawasaki's uh, bigger sports bikes. So if you compare it like that, it's a, it's basically a cut-down ZX-10R, smaller capacity. It's got all of the same toys, all of the same styling. Um, it's just about half under half the horsepower, but it's, it's significantly cheaper. Um, so if you want to uh, rip about on a little bike, it, it, you're going to be able to do that. It's going to be hilarious fun. Because we're approaching this ban on petrol engines, supposedly it's going to be 2030 for the smaller capacity bikes and 2035 for the bigger capacity motorcycles here in, in the UK. I think this might be the last hurrah of the internal combustion engine. Um, and what a way to go out. It reminds me a little bit of the BMW E60 M5 uh, a, a 5 litre V10 that they just designed for a road car, absolutely incredible bike and um, that particular machine will never be seen again uh, in, in, in a road car. Um, they'll all do uh, V6 and, and maybe maybe not even V8 but it'll be all turbocharged engines until it goes electric and with bikes it's probably the same. Um, so this might be the last chance to get something which is going to be very very unique, a hugely um, a hugely experienced focused uh, riding so you're just gonna you're just gonna have this a whale of a time um, listening to that little engine there's gonna be a good modding scene as well for them um, because people are going to use them in other markets for racing uh, like they do the Ninja 400 so there's loads of cool things about this little bike 
All right, well, I'm going to go and look at some of the comments uh, that other people have left about this bike and just see what other people thought about it. Right, okay, so here we go. Here's some of the specs. So in the US, it's 9,699, so as I already mentioned, 10,000 pound, or 10,000 dollars, about 9,000 pound over here. Torque peaks at 11,000 RPM, um, which I didn't mention. And yeah, here's some nice pictures of the bike. So yeah, here you go. Look at the, um, the controls here with the TFT, it looks really nice. Stunning styling. That exhaust you're probably going to be able to remove um, to make it look a little bit nicer. Uh, what have people said in the comments? Hope it's as good as the old ZXR 400. So here's all the old four cylinder bikes from 30 years ago. Um, ordered one today, can't wait. All of Kawasaki's technology on a 400, it's going to rip. Yep, that's what I think as well. 10k lol. So if someone here just thinks that it's way too expensive. Cool, it will be light and fast. Talking about the horsepower, almost $10,000, gotta be joking. 7,000, 7,500 will work for me. Well, I don't know, I mean, I think that's a little bit too cheap, isn't it? Because it costs the same to make this bike as the ZX-10R. Uh, I mean, you've still got four cylinders, you've still got all the suspension components, all the tech. So I think you're getting a good deal. Even though it doesn't sound like that, I think you are getting a good deal. And someone here has just replied, it's a 16,000 RPM screaming inline four track day toy making 200 HP per litre. Not, not a ruckus or your lame brother's Ninja 650. I've been anxiously awaiting the release of this bike. Plan to get one for my son and one for me, not a 10K each. I can get a new ZX6 for seven or 8K, a like new ZX6. Yeah, but the difference with that is that we're not going to be able to buy new ZX6Rs in this country or in Europe because of Euro 5. So like I say, it's going to occupy that, that middle section of the, sector of the niche. And you're not going to be able to rip a ZX6 with 130 horsepower and have as much fun, I don't think, on public roads as well with this less powerful bike. Yeah, not a bad price for this. Tough sell against the 636 though. Yeah, and this person says it's hardly sold anywhere anymore. Uh, once the 636 is gone, this thing will be the new king. Yeah, people can't ride it to the full extent. It's too much at that price, a Prius 660, Honda CBR 650. Yeah, this guy says the CBR doesn't even compare to what they're doing here. I agree. CBR kind of an upright, it's kind of tame really. It's, it's motor is, it's an inline four, but it's not It's not a kind of race bred inline four. It's, it's not a baby fire blade, is it, the CBR 6? 650R. <laughs> Wait till one overtakes you in the tight stuff on your favourite canyon. You'll be thinking it's worth 10k then. I actually agree with that. If I was to get this bike, I would probably go out with a load of the boys who were riding the litre bikes and 600s just to see how it could keep up. I'm sure it would be, I'm sure you could um, because you won't need, you won't need 100 plus horsepower on the roads here in the UK. You wouldn't need that much power. You could have great fun on bike rates horsepower. It's going to be a blast. I see lots of bitching about the price, lots of quality engineering going to this bike. Other brands listed as options. Buy what you want. That new 400 is going to rip. Quality components being used, yeah. Yeah, if you don't want to buy it, don't buy it. Buy something else. These are going to be an absolute steal in the aftermarket. I can't wait to pick up a mediocre for example in three years for 4K. That won't happen here, I don't think. It'll be a very rare, very desirable bike. I don't think the prices will just bottom out. It'll be something that you won't be able to find. If not many people buy them, there won't be a great deal of them available in the used market. Yeah, highly anticipated model, advanced tech and performance capabilities. From the initial look, ZX4RR is top of the line. Yeah, da, da, da. yeah he, he's mentioning ZX4RR there because that's the only variant that's going to the US. They're not getting the SE um, or the ZX4 base spec model. So we've actually got more options here in Europe than those guys in the US. Yeah, this person's saying that we've got all of the electronics at top of the line litre bikes, but a fraction of the price. Think about how much fun it'll be banging through the gears on a screaming 400 and up down quick shifter. I've always ridden litre bikes, but completely understand and respect any guy's decision to ride that 400. And then ask yourself this, can you ride a litre bike as fast as Guy Martin? rides an S1000R around the, liter, around, around the Isle of Man. No, me neither. Maybe we should all think about riding a bike that is in more alignment with our skill level. 
Reading the specs, I assume the price in the 12 to 13k range, this thing is a bargain and should scream with probably 72 to 75 horsepower. Kawasaki will sell all that they can make. I don't think that's true. I think people are on the modern retros, they're on the sports tourers, they're on adventure bikes, aren't they? They're not, unless they don't make very many, they're not going to be totally um, outselling their production capacity. UK press releases have stated 75 to 80 horsepower, which it needs to be. It would be pitiful to be less powerful than the 400s of the early 90s. Its biggest competition is going to be the 600s, equally well equipped, even within the, their own range and barely any more expensive. There's logical, no little logical reason to drop 40 horsepower and it's not significantly lighter. There are, if you look into it in more detail, there are differences though. Um, the 600 you're not going to be able to buy anymore, it's going to be expensive to insure, expensive to tax, expensive to fuel. It's more uncomfortable, very uncomfortable if you consider the Kawasaki's 600 offering. I, and also you can't use the extra power of the 600 on the road. So I think there is a lot of difference um, between the two bikes. Oh, this person's making the point about it being the, the ultimate high point of motorcycle engineering. Um, for street riding, even at slightly above average SUV depressed speeds on twisty roads, the chances are this 400 will be both more comfortable and rewarding most of the time. And for general riding and commuting, the gear ratios alone will ensure it's better suited than the 600s. Interesting. Knee room possibly aside, this will be one heck of an all round bike for shorter trips, carrying kegs, copias, loadouts for six months in Mongolia. Mongolia? Like it's da da da. It's a 6k RPM everyday rider. If that's not cool, I don't know what it is. I don't think it will be an everyday bike. Um, you, you, it's got, no, you can't carry anything on it. Uh, so I don't know how you're going to carry a keg on it. As long as you're willing to spin the thing all the way up and it's in the RPM band, you're going to be disappointed. I think he means to say you're not going to be disappointed. Ninja 400 Twin will be more fun to ride as it produces more torque at lower RPM, where we spend most of our time on the street. Uh, I don't think so. The torque's like 28 fo uh, foot-pounds versus 26.5, so it's not loads more. To and okay, on the track, it's a different story. Why is the torque so low? Because it's a small capacity bike and four cylinders. Bigger capacity, less cylinders equals more torque, generally speaking. I had the twin 400, a small four ball would be nice. Those decals look horrible. Come on Kawasaki, save, your think, save yourself some money and rethink. I think the KRT paint scheme looks fantastic actually. Seems like a bike that's daring you to take it to a tuner and open up all of that power. He's talking about the US market and Canada where it's going to be restricted annoyingly for those guys because of um, noise restrictions. I don't think you're going to be able to take it to a tuner here in the UK and get much more out of it. It sounds like a very highly strung engine already. This person says, the 2023 ZX4R is an impressive addition to the middleweight sports bike segment. It is it is an impressive addition, it's also a unique addition. No one else offers anything like it. Kawasaki continues to push the boundaries of what's possible in motorcycle design technology. And that's true, because as we talked about before, the H2 was, was an amazing um, innovation. Final comment here from Garden State is an impressive bike that's short to turn heads, powerful engine, great handling, sleek design that'll make any rider look good. Yeah, you'll have the quick shift uh, traction control, you'll be able to ride it hard because it, it doesn't have scary power. It's going to make you look, look like a really good rider. And a great choice for both novice and experienced riders. Yeah, that's true because if you're a novice, it hasn't got too much power, um, but if you're experienced, you can benefit from. Um, learning to ride a bike and keeping it on the boil as opposed to just lazily riding uh, a waft of torque. With its combination of power style and performance, the ZX4RR is sure to be a hit among motorcycle enthusiasts. I think a subset of enthusiasts will really want uh, the bike and will really covet it. Whether they'll covet it and sort of fantasize about it and then get their wallets out as well, I don't know. Um, but everyone is going to really rate this bike. Whether everyone will go out and buy it is another thing. Let's see. Alright guys, so that was just my thoughts on the ZX4RR. Let me know what you think in the comments. It's It's got to be a great little bike. Obviously there's loads of arguments against it. Low on torque, expensive, better bikes out there. 
Um, but if you do think it's going to be a great bike, let me know if you, what you think. Let me know if you think it's going to sell as well. That's what I'm quite interested in, if you think it's actually going to sell well or not. Alright guys, well thanks for listening and I'll catch you in the next video.